Alright, welcome back to another episode of Sakura Succubus 2. Now, we got a lot to cover. <laughs> now, as much as it kills me, it's going to take a long time before things uh, get through. <laughs> um, I'm only hoping that Hifumi doesn't really flirt with us, because, again, we're loyal to Cosmos, for fuck's sake. And since she is our girlfriend, we can't really, like disobey that but at the same time uh, I gotta see what this character is gonna say man cuz if he if he if there's not gonna be a decision that I can make then then we're screwed here we're screwed here and I know we are but all we could do is hope uh, after a disciple with Hifumi I returned to my room to sleep I felt exhausted after everything that happened Jesus and I fell asleep. I fall asleep. I you should have just said I fell asleep. Jesus, I fell asleep the moment my head hits the pillow. I slept for what felt like a long time. I'm sure I had a series of vivid dreams, but when I finally awake, I can't remember much of them. They feel fuzzy. I can recall, though dimly, long black hair and pale skin, but that's about it. Oh well, it's not like it matters. I'm not that sort of person to, who places much stock in stories, blood types, and stars things. I think that's all nonsense. Same here. Ah. Still feel tired after the events of last night. I was kept up pretty late. Maybe I should go back to bed. I lie back on my futon ready to sleep, but someone, some, ugh, something stirred from the half-formed slumber. I can smell something truly amazing. The aroma is a complex, multi-layered one. But I can catch definite hints of miso powder and maybe green onions. This smells even better than my mom's cooking. All of a sudden, it feels incredibly hot. I feel incredibly hungry. I wonder if breakfast is ready. This Roken has a a communal, excuse me, <laughs> dining room. Uh, where guests can go and help themselves breakfast. I haven't seen the breakfast menu yet, but I can imagine the food here is on the traditional side. Fried rice, fried fish, pickled plums, miso soup, and the like. I never prepared authentic Japanese breakfast when I'm back home. I don't have the time for it. I usually make do with toast. I can't remember the last time I ate a truly satisfying breakfast. Uh, my stomach is gurgling already. I wonder where the dining room is. Entrance by the wonderful aroma, I rise from my futon. I change out of my nightwear and into my day-to-day -day clothes, then set off through the halls in search of sustenance, sustenance, sustenance. I don't know. Um, I changed out of my nightwear and into my day-to-day -day clothes, then set off through the halls in search of some sustenance. Ugh. It's, rev it's relatively early in the morning, about seven or so. The sliding doors that lined the hallways were all closed, and I didn't hear any noise from them. Maybe the other guests are asleep? The smell leads me out of the Roken and across the garden. It was a warm day, the sky bright and blue, but I still haven't seen anybody else around. I wonder where they are. I followed the perimeter of the garden and then come to a second building similar to the style to the Roken. Um, this must be where the diner is. Um, I let myself in and remove my shoes in front of the door. Um, I step into a pair of indoor sandals and begin my search. Um, I make my way through the corridors, turning this way and that until I come before a set of sliding doors. The aroma I've been following is stronger here than anywhere else. I think this is it. Pardon me. I slide open the doors and then, ah, I blink, taking it back. Is it Fumi? This room is w much warmer and muggier than the other rooms in the Sorokin. The interior decorators is a little different, too. The floor is wooden, not to tame me. 
and it's crammed with countertops and electrical appliances. There are no chairs and no tables, unless you count the large table uh, sustained in the middle of the room. This is in the community dining area. It's not big enough for, uh, for a start. This must have been the kitchen. The sink is piled high with dishes and saucepans and soapy suds flint about the room. Various ingredients are strewn upon the table and a bag of miso powder among them. A cutting board is laid out. A few remnant of chopped green onions and ginger still stuck to it. There is an old-fashioned gas plate resting upon one of the countertops. A kettle sits upon one ring, boiling away, while a stainless steel saucepan rests on the other. I kind of figured this was a Fumi. <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. I know I should be looking up there, but I keep looking down there. That's just my instincts, I'm sorry. And standing by the saucepan, an apron wrapped around, uh, about her middle is Hifumi. She's the only person in the kitchen. I can't see any other staff. Is she really taking care of breakfast preparations on her own? Hifumi, what are you doing in here? Oh, Haruki. Hifumi smiles. If she's at all surprised to see me, she doesn't show it. Her mild expression makes it look almost like she was waiting for me. It's nice to see you awake so early. I was afraid you might be tired after the events of last night. How are you faring, dear? I'm doing well enough, but what about you? Why are you in this kitchen? I thought you were a guest. I am a guest, but I rather enjoy cooking. It relaxes me. It relaxes me. Ugh, excuse me. <laughs> When I heard about this, working was understaffed, I offered a helping hand. I thought it would be fun. This place is understaffed? Oh yeah, the head chef came down with a nasty fever in the start of the week. The staff were in quite a tizzy about it. And how did you find out about that? One of the waitresses told me after about it at breakfast when I first checked in five days ago. My meal was delayed, and the food was served uh, of subpar quality. Uh, the poor waitress was very apologetic. She bowed very much. She almost knocked her head against my table. I was afraid she put too much strain upon herself, the poor thing. I couldn't stand by and do nothing. I asked if I could work in the kitchen if they needed extra hands. <sighs> The waitress tried to demur. Oh no, she said. I couldn't possibly impose on you like this, but I insisted. I talked my way into the position as a temporary chef just for a while. Um, you understand, when the head chef has regained his strength, I will step aside. I see. I guess that explains why Hafumi is doing here, but what about the rest of the staff? They're busy preparing the dining room. I told them I didn't need any help here. I've done most of the work already. You're welcome to stay if you want, Hiroki. You can keep me company. Are you sure that's okay? I don't want to get you in trouble. I'm sure it will be fine. Nobody needs to know that you'll be in here. I promise I won't tell. <sighs> Fumi raises her index finger to her lips in a way to make my heart thud. Oh no. This kitchen is quite lonely, and I would appreciate having somebody to talk to while I work. And you can give me useful feedback, too. What sort of feedback? You can tell me how the miso soup tastes. Hafumi scoops a bit of miso soup up in a ceramic spoon and then holds it up to me. The liquid shimmers in the sunlight like a liquid ember. I can see a small bite-sized lump of tofu lying on the spoon, soaked in the soup. There's a few kernel essences in the spring on uh, kernel essences of spring onions too. My stomach, despite of food, 
uh, does a somersault inside my body. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> Ufumi's food doesn't just smell good, it looks good, too. I can't resist, but when she holds out to me like that. All right, thanks for the food. I duck my head and open my mouth. Ufumi brings the spoon to my lips, and then I, I sub her me obediently. So, Fumi smiles sweetly, still holds the spoon up full, aloft. What do you think of the soup? Is it good? I hold the soup to my mouth for a few minutes, savor it. It's soaked in my tongue, inf infiltrated my senses with a rich and subtle flavors. Five seconds pass before I can bring myself to swallow. The soup slides down my throat and then settles into my stomach, warming me from within. That is such a bad window. I really should not think about that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I sighed satisfied. I only had a little bit of Fumi soup, but there was more than enough to gauge her skills. Her cooking abilities is without peer. It wouldn't be hyperbolic to say. Well... Yeah, that was the best I've had in my life. In my mind. Do you really think so? I don't just think so. I know so. That blend, blend of flavor was exquisite. And the tofu really asked. I thought my mom's miso soup was good. But yours is better than hers. You're incredible. Oh, goodness. That's quite a compliment. <laughs> I'm not sure if my humble miso soup deserves such praise. But thank you, Hiroki. I appreciate your kindness. I'm not just being kind. Cooking's out of this world. Why did you use... What did you use in the, to make the soup anyway? Oh, nothing special. I, I had some finely chopped tofu and green onions. But the secret ingredient is love. Cute. Love? Yes, indeed. Whenever I cook, I try to picture the people who will eat it. Even if possible, I will make it as if my food can make them smile. I think that's what makes my food taste good. I see. And who do you usually think of when you cook? Hmm. Now that that's a good, interesting question. Sometimes I think of a marina. I'm like, Jesus. I even think from time to time of my fans. But this morning, when I was cooking, there was one person whose face kept surfacing in my mind over and over again. And that was, you don't know? Fumi's eye crinkled in the corner. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. Because, hey, you warned me. Hey, you fucking warned me. She fucking warned me about this. And I didn't listen. It was you. Me? Mm-hmm. Miso soup me, me, was made just for you. And so I hope you eat a lot of it for breakfast. Devour my food and think of me the whole while. Nothing in this world will bring me more joy. Yeah, this has gone so out of line. <laughs> so you wasn't kidding when she said that. That that's crazy. Uh, oh shit! Hang on. Uh, can I go back? After my brief tete tea to <laughs> with Hafumi in the kitchen, I made my way to the dining room. Marina and AU and Cosmos must have woken up already, because I find the three of them there, dressed and waiting for their breakfast. Once the food is served and we've eaten our full, I decided to go for a walk through the garden. I like being with Cosmos, AU, and Marina, but sometimes it's nice to be on, on my own. There's nobody else in the garden, which means there's nobody to disturb me. I breathe in the clean mountain air and luxuriate in the simple stretching of my legs. It sure is nice to get away from the city. I have made, I have to make the most of these days comes next week I will be back in the daily grind I bet my boss is an undate me with the work at the moment I get back uh, sorry with the work the moment I get back from uh, back to work sorry uh, I have a headache just thinking about it Ugh, I can't believe this finally gotten away from my boss but I can't stop thinking about him he's infiltrated my mind I sent out on the bench overlooked an oh, pond and led my 
finger fists in my hand, in my hair. Why can't I just relax? I don't want to go back to work just yet. I don't even want to think about work. I guess I got to stick with my job for now, though. I've always liked photography. It was my hobby as a teen. That's why I decided to become a photographer at Sakura Daily. People say you should try to get a job in the field you like. That way you never have to work a day in your life. Foolishly, I believe them. While I enjoy photography, my passion for it is starting to wane. Or wane, excuse me. It's hard to stay enthused about something when it becomes an obligation, or it's even harder to enjoy said um, an obligation <sighs> when you have an angry boss breathing down your neck. Oh, what was me? At least I can stay here for a few more days. I can kick back and take it easy. <laughs> beep, beep. My phone's buzzing. I wonder who that is. With any luck, it'll be Marina asking if we can meet up, or maybe it'll be my parents asking for the latest news. Re my life. I had a pretty bad feeling about this, though. I know exactly who it'll be, even before I slide my phone out of my pocket. Of course, it's that bastard. My boss knew I was going away for a week. Even I even asked him not to contact me even if it was an emergency. And here he is, sending me more messages. What does he want? I scrolled through the messages quickly. It was long and, ram it was long and rambling, like always, but it essentially boils down to this. He has a new John lined up for me already, huh? My boss wants me to take some photos of an up-and-coming sports star for an article when I get back to Tokyo. He provided me with some details about her, such as her name, her age, and her accomplishments. Hazel Williams, isn't it? Hmm. Her name sounds vaguely familiar. I think she, he's, she's a tennis player. My dad's pretty fond of tennis, and she likes to... Oh, sorry. He likes to tell me about it whenever I go and see him. I'm not invested in tennis and sports in general, but I guess I'd better drum up some interest if I to meet up to this Hazel girl. Really though, Hazel Williams? That does sound, that doesn't sound like a very Japanese name. Was she really born in this country? Apparently so, according to my boss's messages. She represents Japan, uh, represents Japan in the national tennis team. She must be part Japan. Maybe her dad's American? I wonder what, what she looks like. My boss sent me a few links of various my two videos. I guess this must be the footage of Hazel. I'm technically on vacation, but it can't hurt to check a few videos out. If I'm going to, to photograph this girl, I need to know what she looks like beforehand. Watching the plays might give me a few ideas of her potential poses, too. When you photograph celebs, particularly sporting stars, dull and static poses are a no-go. Action shots are where it's all at. Let's see here. I opened the link to one of the my two videos and wait to load. The Wi-Fi is around me is pretty spotty, so it takes a while. The video loads for a good two minutes. Mother of God, is this just a joke now? Come on now. But when it finally starts, my attention is completely captured. The Hazel Williams in this short clip is well proportioned woman in tan complexion. Her hair is pulled back into a ponytail, and she's wearing a striped shirt and a cute pleat skirt. Jesus. She grips a tennis racket in one hand, her face a mask of concentration. The opponent, a mousy haired woman of a little note, hits the ball across the net. Hazel watches its trajectory, her eyes keen like a hawk, then she strikes. She darts forth, her powerful muscles and her thighs ripple as she returns the ball on the other side of the court. Her opponent tries to prairie, but she's too slow, she can't make it in time. And that game goes to William, she take it, she's taking the championship, William wins with a score 
William wins. All right. He's in the to racket. She turns to the camera and brightly, despite the exhaustion evident of her brow. She smiles a large, toothly grin. Her face flustered and flushed and sweaty, excuse me, and strikes a victory pose. I did it. I won. Her enthusiasm is infectious, even from the other side of the screen. This video was uploaded 18 hours ago. I guess this footage was from the tournament yesterday. This fur is already over and done with. But I feel excited simply watching you. She's so cute and bubbly. It's hard not to root for her. She's pretty impressive. I wonder what the comments say. I don't usually bother trimming with the comments of my tube. <laughs> that says a lot. Though the internet's anonymity can be a blessing at other times, it can be a curse. No shit. <sighs> People seem particularly quick to show the wrong sides of themselves on the comments section like my tube. If I had a thousand, 100 yen every t for every time I've seen the comment section descend into chaos and anarchy. I'd be richer than Marina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a point. To my relief, however, I seem... I, I find these comment sections relatively contained. Most of these replies are supportive of Hazel, if a little lecturous. Hazel's really adorable. Her little fang is to die for. Her thighs are even more thick than... <laughs> Strawberry milkshake, what a goddess. <laughs> For such a young athlete, her form is exciting. You can tell she practices a lot. She's always so cheerful. Watch her never fails to make me happy. She's the pride and joy of Japan. We all love you, Hazel. All what I would give for her to crush me to death with those thighs of hers. Okay, this is... This has gotten... All right, then. Did any of you guys know that she's lesbian? I saw an article about it online. There are pics of her kissing another woman. I just wish that was me. Hey, guys, are you out of your mind? Or is he still not wearing any panties? Pause at the video at 2 and take a look. This could be big, if true. No oh, panties, huh? I doubt that's true. There's no way an up-and-coming athlete like her would be allowed to play at a public televised commando. And her tan, sweaty thighs are very appealing. I wouldn't mind to see a little bit more of her if you catch my drift. <laughs> I see you, brother. Wait a minute. I followed the instructions of the comment and started the video at 027. Then I started the screen. My eyes like narrow like focus I think you can see a flash of flesh color beneath the kind of color but it's very I can really tell but she she's just wearing skin colored undies that must be it now I feel dumb for getting my hopes up I was about to say the same thing well duh why do you even want to even look at Hazel's rear I like you're so desperate you need to lust after every pretty girl. You already have a you, Cosmos and Marina. Isn't enough enough? Besides, if this is other coming to be believed, Hazel doesn't even like men. I wonder if she really is a lesbian. I guess it could be all hearsay. It could always I could always look it up online and just post a photo of her kissing another woman, but I decided to leave it off for now. I wasted enough time scrutinizing the pixels of the tournament footage. As being or not, she seems like a really interesting woman. I think I'd like to meet her. Photo photographing her sounds like fun. I tapped out a quick reply to my boss's email. I briefly considered sending a comment, sending a message to my dad. Being a huge tennis nut, that's a fact. I bet he'd be able to provide me with an ample information about Hazel. He'd probably be excited too to know that I have a shot of pho photographing her. Fucking hell. But in the end, I decided against it. I can't tell him late. I can tell him later. Right now, I'd rather go back to my room and relax. I rise from the bench and stretch, raising my arms above my head. 
My body feels tense, shoulders stiff. I always get like this whenever I have to talk with my boss, even over emails. He's so demanding. I wanted to relax more, darn it. I turn, ready to leave the garden behind me, but... Oh! Hey, girl. This is unexpected. Oof. Yeah. I smack into something very small, soft and squishy, like two balls of freshly baked bread. Um, Hiroki? Uh, it looks like I'm pressed up against Cosmos, with a narrow inch of space between us. I must have bumped into her, and by the sounds of it, it was with some degree of strength. Are you alright? I didn't mean to hurt you, did I? No, I'm fine. You sure? Mmm, my chest absorbed the most of the impact. They're like, they're kind of like airbags, you see. Right. I don't know if that was a mental image I really needed, or I'm glad that she seems okay. I hate to give my cute girlfriend any bumps or bruises, even accidentally. Thank you for being considerate, though. You truly are the best boyfriend a girl can have. With a cute girlish giggle, Cosmos nuzzles closer to me. She smells pretty good, and she feels good too. Mm! Though our embrace of rather sudden nature, I might be enjoying this a bit too much. I should probably put a stop to this before they get too out of hand. I love you too, but can you give me a bit more air? If anybody sees us out here, we might get in trouble. Oh yes, you are quite right, I'm sorry. I'm so happy to see you, I couldn't help with so. Perhaps I act a bit too forward. <laughs> Cosmos take a step back, smiling shyly. Whenever I'm with you, I sometimes forget I'm a succubus. <laughs> I was drawn to you because of your unique scent, whenever it's like honey to us. Suck it by. But you treat me with such and much more kindness than anyone else has. When we're together, I feel like I really am your girlfriend. My face started turning red and my heart flustered in my chest. I got all excited and then, well, Cosmo smiles with a rueful ting. I forget myself. We succubar are human. Though we might look human, we're a lot stronger than your kind. If I'd start clinging on to you, um, I could have heard it. And if that happened, I would never have forgiven myself. And I bet Marina and you wouldn't have forgiven me either. They love you a lot, too. I'm not so sure about that. I know Marina and you are fond of me. However, you try to pretend otherwise. But I don't know if they love me in a traditional sense. Marina seems like she likes me as a pet, whereas you, well... Who knows what's going on with that girl? Tell me about it. She seems so tempestuous and flighty. I don't even... Sh I doubt even she fully understands her own feelings. Hey, Aroki. Cosmos peers at me. Are you alright? You look deeply and thought about something. Ah, kind of, I guess. Is it about work? Yeah, it is. How'd you know? I was walking through the garden taking some pretty photos. Of course she was, being a rather powerful star with a millions of followers. She takes photos of almost everything. She's even crazier about taking photos than I am. When I saw you sitting on the bench, you were looking at your phone and your brows were crisp. That's the look that you were wearing when your boss messaged you, and I figured it was work related. I was so. I guess it's, that's some good guesswork. Like a real regular tipper. Uh, you're like a regular detective. Excuse me, <laughs> I can't speak. No, I'm not. I'm not smart enough. And who told you that? The rest of my sisters said I'm stupid. Hey, you in particular. Uh, I think she has a point. I'm slow. It's hard for me to learn new things. I could me never memorize dance steps like hey, you and work in a business like Marina. I'm not clever at all. But you figured out how I was feeling and what was wrong with me. For all from a glance. You might disagree with me, but I think you, that's pretty clever. It's not. I can tell how you feel because you spend more time you spend more time together. It's because I'm your girlfriend. I used to be bad at understanding emotions. Hey too. I use always said I'm troubled with reading the atmosphere. Whatever that means. 
wherever that is. Maybe... I thought maybe I was a defective succubus. I didn't understand humans or myself. I didn't know what my purpose was. But I thought I'd gotten better after all this after being with you. You've helped me understand nice feelings of love and happiness and also dark negative feelings like just jealousy and loneliness. I've never really experienced those things until now. It's all new to me, but Cosmos rests a hand against her breast just above her heart. I cherished every, each and every one of them. Thank you, Rocky, for all this. You have done more for me than you can imagine. So if possible, I'd like to, I would like to lend an ear of your worries too. I want to be with you if you don't mind. Cosmos looks utterly adorable when She looks so sweet it should be illegal. Cosmos, yes Hiroki? You do more than enough for me already. But don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Hey Marine, hey you, and you too. You're all very precious to me. Cup her cheeks in my hand and did it in my head. My lips made her for a brief, gentle kiss, which she sighs into. Okay. She smiles tremendously. I love you. I love you too. I love you loads. How much is loads exactly? I can't qu quantify that. Can't you try? Numbers can make things easier to understand. Well, hmm. Emotions don't really work like that. They're not always logical, so... But, let's see. I love you more than the stars in space. How's that? Oh, you. Cosmo shakes her head. I don't think she's entirely believing this vocal claim, but her smile on her lips still doesn't want... Doesn't waver, excuse me. That can't be true. There are billions and billions of stars in this in space. I doubt any human has the ability to love anybody that much. You're flattering me. Of course I am. <laughs> but is there a problem with that? I am your boyfriend after all. Hiroki, thank you. Hiroki winds her arms around mine and I escort her to the beach, to the bench where I sat before. We both sank down upon it. Cosmos shivers as the cold stone presses against her bare thighs. Cosmos lent her hand, fall against my shoulders. A few loose strands of her cyan hair tingle. It <laughs> tickles my nose. She's so close to me, I can smell her shampoo. It's very sweet. Like strawberries. Everything about Cosmos is sweet. Don't wonder she's so popular. She has a huge amount of male followers. So we have to be careful when we're together. If anybody knew uh, dating Cosmos, my life wouldn't be worth living. Back in Tokyo, the two of us had to be careful whenever we were out on dates. But now, we're in the countryside. We can't can afford to throw cautions in the wind. It's nice to sit with Cosmos alone and enjoy the moment. I know I won't get a chance to do this when I leave the Rook end. I need to make the most of the time when I can. Hiroki? Cosmos look at me, her heart-shaped face, tilted accent. Are you still thinking about work? <laughs> you got me. Sorry about that. I know I came here to unwind, but it's hard but it's harder than it seems. It's all right, I understand. I find it hard to relax, too. You are? Mm-hmm. Cosmo shifts on the bed, she's trying to get comfy. She nuzzles her cheeks against my shoulders and sighs. Since I'm an internet celebrity, I always have to work. I can never take any time away. And my friends will get restless. I want to relax, too, and spend time with you. But I have to upload new photographs on my rep on the camera every day. And that's why I've been taking a lot of pictures. I'm appreciative of my fans, of course. It's because of them I'll be able to continue manifesting in the human world. Without their love and support, I wouldn't have the strength to keep going. But this is <laughs> they can be quite demanding. It's hardly satisfying the expectations of all these people. Sometimes I think it would be easier to give all this fame up. I would never really wanted to be famous anyway. But if I did, I wouldn't be able to stay in the human realm. And I wouldn't be able to spend time with you. It's a dilemma. Man, that sounds hard. I never knew you had it so rough. 
I thought e-girls were pretty cushy. Had pretty cushy lives, all things considered. But I suppose they even have their worries. I can tell Cosmos is giving her job her all. She wants to satisfy all of her friends. But she has over a million of them. In that sense, it's almost like she has over a million bosses. <sighs> They're all putting her in different directions, demanding new content on the daily, and Cosmos is doing her best to make them happy. But it's not possible to satisfy everyone. Well, do your best. Hang in there. I pull Cosmos' slender body a little closer to me and win an arm about her shoulder. I don't know if I can help in any particular sense, but I'm always here to listen. I'll do my best to ease your stress however I can. I don't want to make you. I don't want you making yourself sick. You will take good care of yourself, won't you? Cosmos is so spaced out. She is exactly the kind of person who might forget to eat or clean up the house without a bit of prompting. I'll do my best. But if I fail on that score, would you mind looking after me? Oh, she's my girlfriend. I'm pretty sure she's going to do that. But if we're going to be by ourselves, mm. well, considering the fact that she's a goddamn succubus, there's no way she's going to do that. Of course, I'll look after you. I don't mind that a bit. In fact, it will be my pleasure. Still, I draw my lips away and then smile sheepishly. I'm sure there's a lot of people to be surprised to know that a succubi have many concerns. I guess we all have to work to make a living in this world, huh? Mm, that's right. We might be different species, but we're not very dissimilar. Some succubus look down on humans. They treat them as lesser beings. Uh, Christmas included. But I think those succubi are wrong. You humans are important, too. You don't have the power to do it, but you all, you all working to make ends meet. I like how ten tenacious you are. It's admirable. And I think you're admirable too. You might be having a hard time with work, but don't give up. I believe in you, Haruki. Thanks, I'll do. I'll do my best to believe in me too. I was feeling kind of down after receiving those messages from my boss, but this conversation with Cosmos help me flip out my negative feelings around. She's a succubus and I'm a human, but we both do our best to achieve our goals. In the, press, I, in the past, I stressed over my job on my own. I didn't have a girlfriend or any close friends to fit in. But now I have Cosmos, AU, and Marina. I'm not alone. A lot of people are cheering me on, and I don't want to let them down. And Hiroki, one more thing. What is it? Well, I don't want you to think I'm jealous of anything, but anything that isn't it you might be my boyfriend but I don't mind having an open relationship why am I not surprised that she said this shit <laughs> I know Marina and and a you love you but I don't I don't want to tear tear you but I don't want to tear you apart from them they're my sisters too but we're not blood related related by blood and I also love them I would be happy if you we could all be happy, but AU is right. She, you should be wary of Ifumi. She's more aggressive than she looks. If you give her a chance, she'll make a move on you. Don't let your guard down or she'll end up... You could end up her slave. But if Ifumi really tried to do something like this, she seems so nice. She might seem nice, but looks can be deceiving. You should be careful. With that woman around, you might be in danger. Don't be taken by her sweet facade. You have to keep in mind that she is an actress. And she's much, much better at hiding her true intentions than AU. Well, that's about the end for me. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in for this video. If you guys do attend to enjoy this, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Also, if you want to see more, tell me in the comments down below. Or just leave it a like on the video. I don't know why I even said that. <laughs> but nevertheless, tell me in the comments what you guys think of the video. But um, also hit that notification bell to join the Iron Hide today. It's been Zed, guys.
Later.